So, uh, what's been your opinion of uh, bowl practice so far? What have you seen from the team? They've been great. I think they're excited about playing. You know, it's uh, the one thing about this group is they love football. So, anything about it, I think when you get into the, the nuts and bolts, and we talk about it all the time, the best part of football is actually football. So, when they can get back out in the practice field, when they get in the meeting rooms, um, they enjoy it. You know, they had finals last week, so we had a break of five days. Um, we specifically went on the weekends um, and then gave them five days off and then kind of got into practice in earnest um, the other day. So we kind of give our, like, it's our daily schedule. So today's a Wednesday for us, even though it's, I think it's not a Wednesday in the real world, but it's a Wednesday for us. So um, we're going to go through a typical Wednesday training session today um, with our meetings this morning leading up to it. And then our, uh, we'll bring them back in the afternoon like we always done for our night meetings. But it's a, it's a Wednesday deal. But they've, they've been great. They're excited. They're excited about one more opportunity to play together as a group. Before uh, you got into game prep, um, does this give you a chance to evaluate some of the younger guys more extensively? Not really because we do it all the time. So every Friday practice we, we have had <clears throat> um, our travel guys are in the weight room lifting. And then we, we always have taken the, the younger guys all season long on every Friday. And, and um and had individual periods with them, seven on seven periods with them, and eleven on eleven. So this has been a constant, ongoing deal for us. So there's nothing that happened over, you know, those first two weekend practices that we're like, hey, who's that kid? Because we coach him every week, so we see him every day. So you get you guys have been through a lot, obviously, on the COVID front in terms of <laughs> that unrest. When you start to see that kind of crop up again, what kind of thoughts do you have? Moving you know, forward? obviously, the health and safety of our players is number one. Um, we were one of us in Oregon State, one of two teams in a league to play every game last year. Uh, I credit our university and really specifically our players for how they've handled it. Um, we actually had a long meeting last night about taking care of our ecosystem. We have, you know, we're 11 days away from our game um, and our prep has been good and I'm sure NC State's prep has been good. I think the only thing that can sidetrack it is potentially an outbreak. Um, you know, I think there were the most players, 37 players in the NFL tested positive on Monday, which is the most they've ever had. Um, it's You go throughout the country, our basketball team has had games canceled, our women's team has had games canceled. Um, so we're very conscious about it. Um, and we're, we're trying to do everything we can that we've learned from past. You know, our meetings are set up that way. They're spaced so that no one's within six feet of each other in the meeting room. Um, we do a lot of things on the field, so we're outside. Um, most of our bigger team meetings will be held outside. Um, but I would say all of us, and I think I speak for all, everybody heading into bowl season now is a, is a little nervous because it sounds like it's going to get worse before it gets better. So we, we all got our fingers crossed and all going to do what we can possibly do to stay away from it. But it doesn't, when you look at this variant, it sounds like it um, spreads a lot faster and a lot quicker. Um, so we just got to be conscious of it and do what we can to kind of prevent that. So. When the bowl matchup was announced, you told us on the on the phone call that what you knew about North Carolina State was Dave Dorn was the coach and there was a wolf pack. Mm -hmm. What have you learned? That is 100% true. He is, is still the head it coach, is, still, and that is still, still their nickname. And I talked to him last week. So yeah, yes, he's and so he's still the head coach, and that's still their nickname. So um, really good football team. You know, their, their quarterback's outstanding. I think he's thrown 35 touchdowns, four interceptions. You know, his TD to interception ratio is off the charts. They got two really, really good running backs. Um, they're a 3 3 stack defense that's kind of all over the place. Um, they have an inside linebacker who's as good as Will Face. Uh, they got a safety that's all over the field, like the Tasmanian Devil, and makes a ton of plays. So um, it's a good team. You know, it beat Clemson. Um, lost to one to Miami. You know, lost to Wake Forest, who played in the championship game. Um, and then lost to Mississippi State and SEC team. So, you know, it's a, it's a really, really good football team. They've, Dave's done a really nice job there. You know, they, they're tough. They're hard-nosed. They're very disciplined. Um, they got a dynamic kick return. I think they're number one in the country in kick returns. Um, so it's, it's in all three phases. They're really well coached, and they've got really good players. So we're excited about the matchup. You know, I think that's what happens in the bowl games. That kind of excites everybody is you got a team from the East Coast. Uh, playing a team from the West Coast that normally would not play each other, but um, it's a great matchup in the Holiday Bowl, and we're, we're excited about the challenge. But you really won't know what they're all about till you actually get out on the field and go, okay, that's what that guy looks like, that's what this guy looks like, because we've never seen them, and we don't play any crossover games where somebody we played played them. So you can say, you kind of understand, hey, that's what the Cal receiver's like, and then he played them, so now we got a feeling for them. So um, I think it's, it'll be new for them, it'll be new for us. Your thoughts on their offensive lineman, Nicky Aquan? Yeah, he's, he's one of the, the best um, offensive guys, offensive linemen in the country. Extremely athletic. 
Um, you know, people have been talking about him for a couple of years. Um, kind of look every day to see if he's going to opt out. Um, but no, I'm joking about that. I mean, our guys are excited if they get an opportunity to play against him because he's a he's a great guy to measure yourself about because he's he certainly is one of the top tackles in in the, in the country and will be a high draft pick. With a good amount of guys in the transfer portal, has it impacted practice at all? It's less like if you just take punter, uh, where where are you in the punting? Yeah, we're fine. I mean, uh, there's a lot of kids that, uh, and again, for all those kids, we've met with every kid in our team, and they know exactly where they stand. And you have four years of eligibility. You know, how do you want to use them? You know, and and sometimes, do you want to be a scout squad player, or do you want to play somewhere where you're going to get an opportunity to get on the field? And our job, whether they're here for five days or five years, is to help them in that situation. So, we've had a couple kids. You know, they all have the option if they put their name in the portal to stay through bowl practice because they've earned that. Um, and a lot of kids have elected to do that. Um, some kids have elected maybe they've got some opportunities right now that they want to already move on and and some of those kids have already been you know offered some scholarships at some lower levels and are going to take advantage of that so um but it hasn't impacted us or our numbers or anything like that so we're would in good shape accept, would you accept them all back because they can come back out of the portal would you yeah we haven't had that discussion with them what we're trying to do here is help grow them as players like they get an opportunity to practice for two more weeks so if you get an opportunity to practice for two more weeks the, the you know how you get better at football by playing football you know, you don't get better at football by sitting at home waiting for someone to call you. So um, I think the kids that have opted for that aspect um, is, again, we're just trying to help develop them and see what they can do. And then they'll they'll assess and we'll assess what's the best situation for you. Like, what do you want to do? It's their decision. Um, we would love for all of them to stay. But what I want for them is to be in the right situation. So that's kind of how we go about it. Are you anticipating any other opt-outs outside of Latino? No, and Otito's an injury thing. It's not an opt-out. That's not Otito's mindset. I think Otito really, really, really wants to play football, and I, I love Otito. Um, but he's not 100% healthy right now. So, um, you know, I, everybody else that's practicing, I would be surprised if someone goes through two weeks of training and then the day before the game says, I'm not going to play in the game. So I don't, I don't, we don't anticipate that now. Have to ask: Is there any update on the situation with a new contract or extension? Yeah, again, we've talked about this. My, my contract is a personal thing between me, so I don't, I don't need to discuss that publicly. And I don't mean to be, but you know, what's your contract? Do, you, do we talk about that? Do we talk about other people's contracts? For some reason, in this profession, that they think it's, I've just never been that way, and that's that's my choice to to not talk about that. Just like, you know, some people think that that's something that they should know, but that's. That's a personal thing with me. So okay. I, I love the school, and our school has been great to me. So I'm not concerned. I, it's also not a very big concern for me, to be honest with you. So, any update on a defensive line coach or uh, outside linebackers coach? Or defensive line? Yeah, we're, we were going to go through the bowl game. You know, so there's, um, you know, just get because you're not going to get someone in here that's going to learn your system that you can say, hey, let's transition in. You know, and it, just like if you. <clears throat> You're not going to take a transfer player to 11 days before your game and say, hey, we're going to get that kid to play. So um, we've done our due diligence. We've talked to, talked to people and have conducted interviews. And, um, you know, even if we were to hire someone three days from now, that person's not going to be able to come in here and coach in our bowl game. So we were fortunate to have Clancy Pendergrass here. And, you know, you're talking about a guy who's been a defense coordinator in the National Football League coaching Super Bowls, you know. So it's a, it was a luxury for us to, when Clancy was here that we could get an opportunity to put him um, with our front guys and, and he'll coach them through the bowl game and then, you know, we'll kind of figure out where we are from that standpoint. He handles both positions? Right now he is, yeah. Okay. Hey, real quick, are you, a, are you a voter from the coaches' poll? No. For the top 25? You're not? No. Okay. And I, I don't know how anybody does. Because yeah. you can't tell me you can't tell me that there's a coach in the country that watched all, however many you got to vote for, 35 teams. When when I we play on Saturday, I get in the morning. I'm watching our previous game and then moving on to our next opponent. I don't know what happened in the ACC unless someone told me. So the fact that I could the fact that I could rank what the ACC rankings would be is it's really to me. I don't I don't know how they and if someone does it and watches all those games, then wow, I, my hat's off to you. But you know, our, our focus and attention is on the team that we have. So um, to, for someone to say that I think this team is third in the ACC and that puts them 14th in the country is I, 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 don't, I don't get an opportunity to, to see those guys play, and, and nor should I because I should be focused on our team. So even if we have a, a night game, well, as one of our teams that we're going to play playing in the afternoon on Saturday, I'm going I'm to watch a Pac-12 team play because we're playing them in two weeks as opposed to I'm going to watch – an SEC game and a Big 12 game. And that's not that I don't, I'm not a fan of football, but I, you just don't have the opportunity. I don't know even if you, you're not a coach, do, do the people that vote in the AP poll, do you, do you vote, do you guys vote in any of those polls? 
I don't have an AP no. vote. I have award. I have votes for the awards, bunch of the awards, like the outlet and the bullet in the cockpit. I mean, I watch like 22 games a week, but I got more time yeah. than you do. But like there's a hundred. It's 22 games a week, so you see 44 teams. There's 130 right. teams. Right. Who can do that? No. I don't know anybody that can do that. And you know, have so more free time than you and do. you do have more free time than me, and and I don't and, know and uh, <laughs> exactly. Could you vote for? Do you know? Could you tell no, me who are the top teams? In the SEC East, okay. not the SEC East, not the SEC West. I don't know because we don't see it enough. So, I I don't think. Don't they hand it off to someone? Don't the coaches? Call yeah, them but then why do they call it a coaches poll? Yeah, so if you hand it off, then who do you hand it off to? Poll. Call it the hand it off poll. Yeah, call it the staff. I'm with yeah. you. I'm I'm in agreement with you. So I, and I understand the question. And if there is someone out there that does it, I don't know. I've been offered. We've all been offered the opportunity to do it, and I've turned it down because I wouldn't. I couldn't do a really good job at it. And if I can't do a really good job at it, then then, then pass it to somebody that can do a good job at. Now there are people out there. Then, I think they're really the poll should be some type of media poll because the media has the opportunity to see everybody, and that's who they cover. And you know, get the top media guys in the country and let them get together because they see it. You know, the guys that, on game day that watch every single game, the guys on the Fox crew that watch every single game. Um, there's a bunch of guys out there that do see it, and they see it so much better than we do. So, for us to have an opinion of, you know, who's the second ranked team in the American, I, I, I don't know that. I know Cincinnati's really good. I think Houston had a really good year, but I've, I've never seen either of them play an entire game where I could make an observation, and I don't even know how you do that. So how do you compare who the best team in that conference is to this conference, and they've never played each other? I don't know, and that's, that's what makes this game beautiful because everybody has an opinion. So I think we should just have a national poll where everybody gets a vote. So we'll see how that part works. But Thanks, does that answer your question? It does. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks sir. Sir.